Hey guys, this is a quick video to introduce Bezzy and some of its applications. If you're not using headphones, I'd highly recommend doing so to follow along with the audio. So to start, Bezzy has been redesigned from the ground up as a virtual MIDI controller to take control of your automation. Bezzy transmits up to seven MIDI channels simultaneously in real time and can be mapped to any DAW. So let's take a look at Bezzy's interface. On the top left, we have the path selector. This is where you select the active path. Each path corresponds to a MIDI channel, and Bezzy broadcasts MIDI control change events on channels 1 through 7, so on your MIDI keyboard, these would typically be your knobs. Next up, we have Reset. This resets the active path, so if you want to remove all the points, you reset. Um, then we have Horizontal and Vertical Inversion. So if you have a bunch of points on your grid and you want to flip them horizontally, you can reverse them like that. Um, we also have vertical inversion, so you can flip them vertically as well. Then we have copy and paste. So if you wanted to copy the current path, you could do so. See this light lights up when it's active, and you could go to a different path and paste it. Uh, and as you see, you can see all of your paths at the same time. Um, the active path has this fill, so you could easily see which one's active, and all, all the um, dots are only on the active path. Um, next up we have these two guys which are MIDI controls, so we'll come back to them. Um, over here we have the, the context menu, which is the menu that corresponds to the active point. So if I click here, you can see it says default, I can remove it, and it shows you exactly where it lies in the grid. So you see here it's at one and your min is zero and your max is 127, just as it is with any MIDI. Uh, then you have the type. So currently there's three types. There's default, Bezier, and Bezier 2. Uh, so you can easily change through. Bezier 1 gives you one control point and you can easily drag it around um, and it restricts you from creating any points that are invalid. So if we go back to default and we switch to Bezier 2. We have two control points and you have full flexibility. Um, and if you see over here, these two guys are endpoints. So if I select it, it shows it's an endpoint and it doesn't let you remove it. So if you want to remove one of these curves, you have to remove either one of these points and then it'll go back to here. Um, so on the right hand side we have zoom in and zoom out. So just as it looks you can zoom into your current grid, zoom out of your current grid. Um, so Bezzy defaults to four bars. You can go up to 16 bars and down to, down to one bar. So on the bottom left, we have an indicator letting us know whether or not we're connected to MIDI. So on a Mac, this feature is enabled by default. It's a virtual MIDI port named Bezzy, and you don't have to do anything. On Windows, you have to download an application, which is free. It's called Loop MIDI, and all you have to do is create an entry and call it Bezzy. And if you already have Bezzy open, there'll be a retry button right here. And otherwise, when you open uh, Bezzy, it'll auto-connect. So over here on the bottom right, we have snap. So that is snap to grid. So that does just what you think it does. Um, when it's toggled on, you're stuck to the grid. Now, if you want, you can click, and it'll take you wherever you click. But if you drag that, then you're stuck to the grid. So if you click and hold, you're on the grid. Uh, when you take that off, you're free to go wherever you want. Um, so it's nice and smooth. Next up, we have triplet mode. Let me clear that. So let me skip this for a second. Over here, we have um, the current grid resolution. And this goes from whole notes all the way up to 128 notes. So you could toggle triplet mode, and it'll split it into uh, half note triplets, quarter note triplets, and so on. So now let's switch over to Ableton. So Bezzy works with any DAW, but in this case, I'll show you how to do it here. and all the same rules should apply. So let's first open up preferences. Um, so you'll see that there's an input and an output for Bezzy. 
In input, you want to turn on track and remote. And for output, you want to turn on sync. Um, under the clock type, you want to make sure it's set to song, which it should be by default. So in this current setup, I have a single MIDI track. And in it, I have an instance of Massive. Um, I have it set to very basic oscillators. And I just threw on um, these macro controls onto wavetable position um, intensity. And the third one, where is it? Down here for sign shape or dry wet. And I turned them all the way up. So it just gives us some parameters to control. Um, so I'll show you how to hook that up. So toggle on the uh, MIDI map mode and open up Bezzy. So now I'll talk about these guys. So this is a horn. Um, so what it does is it just transmits a single MIDI signal. So it's really easy to notify whatever DAW you're using that that's the control you want to use. This is this, the same thing as like pushing a button or turning a knob to let your software know what your, which input you're coming from. Um, so let's start here. Macro one highlighted, open up Bezzy. Let's go here to the first one to make it easy and we'll click the horn and you see that now CC1 is set to macro one. Um, so now we will continue through, go to macro two, go to orange and click the horn. You got macro two there now. So let's keep going macro three, over to three, click the horn, got that guy. Um, let's pick one more. So by default we have a reverb. Let's, let's pick a reverb and put that on green. So now those are all mapped. And let's close the map mode. Um, so by default, when you let's so this is four bars. Let's let's loop four bars. So that's already set. Um, loop mode is turned on, and we'll click play. So if you go to Bezzy, uh, nothing's happening. So that's where this comes in. This is your it's almost similar to like turning on a device in Ableton. This is your power. So when you click this, you'll see um, there'll be a seek bar that shows you where you are in your loop. And that's something to note with Bezzy, whatever automation you create, it'll loop. So it'll play four bars and it'll come back to the beginning. So if this was any longer, it would offset your loop and you'd be out of time. So let's go back, back to four bars. So Typically with um, Ableton and as well as some other DAWs, automation is kind of a pain point. You know, there are like hacks to get around creating certain things, but it's not it's not really easy, it's not fun. Ableton added some Bezier curve automation, but it gives you kind of a funky curve and there really isn't that much flexibility. Like if I wanted to create like a mountain, a nice mountain, um, could go like that and potentially go like that. You see it's already, it's already kind of weird, but you know, you're not going to get that shape that you want. Um, so let's delete that. Um, and let's continue on through. So let's switch to MIDI channel one, which is red, which we've set to macro one. So let me reset yellow just to start fresh. Um, so let's create, let's turn on snap, turn off triplet. So let's create a Bezier one curve. So there's one control point. You put it wherever you want, but let's let's make it basic. Um, so that's there, and let's start. So as you can see down here, uh, there's macro one, and that's mapped to this red uh, path. And when you toggle it on, let's see. Once this starts over here, you can see that path starts moving. Um, so same goes for the next one, just throw in some random stuff. You see they're both moving. And so let's turn this off for a moment and let's, I have a, that massive patch I showed you before. So basically it's just, um, sounds like this. Uh, so let's throw in a quick, uh, MIDI loop, some MIDI notes. Currently, Bezzy is off, so when you play it, you'll, you'll hear the, the regular pattern. So let's
Bosco and uh, Taiwan Bezzi. about what you've done, you could commit it by hitting record. So let's close this just to illustrate a point. Um, and here you want to make sure that you have uh, automation arm on and this will allow you to not, um, this will allow you to overdub on your notes. So we hit record. So once you've recorded that, then you could open up Bezzy and toggle it off. Um, and depending on your project, maybe you want to, you know, you could delete these parameters and move on. Uh, but in this case, Bezzy is kind of used for sound design. Uh, but, you know, it could be used for uh, pretty much any automation case. So if you want to work on a transition for your song or so on, you could use Bezzy to make it pretty easy. So like here, everything is separated and it's not really easy to tell what's going on. So with Bezzy, it's all on top of each other, and it's really easy to move around and change parameters as you go. Uh, so now that we've turned this off, we've recorded this out. You can turn off all of these guys and So you could also use Bezzy as a tool to play against. Um, you know, before we had music and we would add automation to it. So now let's just play Bezzy with no sound. So in this case, this track is armed for recording and I had a MIDI controller here so I could play against the automation. So let's go off what we had before. It was uh, A flat, C, E flat, G. Um, and I'll, I'll add a little bit to it. into Bezzy and maybe maybe something wasn't working for you you want to change things so let's say I want to do a Bezier 2 curve so two control points and it'll go like that so let's see what that sounds like some more of that. Maybe try it with a curve. Why not? So. Um, so yeah, you know, you could keep going through and you can discover lots of different things. You could pretty much automate anything you want and you can see them all, uh, all parameters at the same time and it's a lot of fun. So uh, thanks for checking out my video and feel free to subscribe below.